I am Spasissimo Victor Masondo, and uh, well known in many circles as an uncle. And so, uh, on my left hand side, because she does have a voice, is the auntie that I wanted to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Gail Masondo, and this is Spasissimo Victor Masondo, my husband. Yeah, as, as I've said, and so we are also known as uncle and auntie, yeah. so that's very important for people to remember. We're everybody's uncle and everybody's auntie, even people are older than us, they still cannot work that out. But maybe these are middle names term. that you missed. Yeah, we missed those it's names. Yeah, well, they're not taken as an engagement to be an uncle, and I'm married to an auntie. <laughs> Well, uh, we met, uh, it's been 21 years now, and... Uh, we met 24 years ago, almost 25 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we met and she winked at me. <laughs> 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 we, were, um, we, we met when we were doing a special project that Gail was doing. She, was, she used to develop special projects for Warner Brothers with the company, and then... And then uh, there was a project to be done in South Africa that was similar to the Henry's Messiah that she did in, in America. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend, Malcolm Duplessis, had actually wanted her to do the same thing in South Africa, but to do a, a different project to celebrate the new South Africa you know, mm -hmm. at the time. So we met there and, and we were introduced to each other and we just talked about, okay, we're going to do the project. and. Uh, but then it meant that we had to talk a lot. It meant that I was your boss. Ooh. And I, <laughs> he came highly recommended. Mm -hmm. um, Uncle Victor is a, an award-winning, acclaimed um, producer mm -hmm. and a bassist by trade on um, his instrument. So he came highly recommended because he had also produced Mary McKeever's first album when she came out of exile. Mm -hmm. So when the proposition came to me to produce a project, the executive produce a project, it was like, I don't know anything about South African music. I know um, Hugh Masekela, Grayson and the Grass, but I didn't know him then. And I knew Mira Makeba as a activist. Mm -hmm. And when I was managing the group Take Six, I had met Lady Smith Black Mombazo, but I didn't know South African music, so we needed someone. Mm -hmm. um, and. Baba came highly recommended. In fact, I was like, oh, nobody's that good. <laughs> After having worked with a lot of people, I was like, oh, was, something is out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, you know, um, there's a cultural difference here, mm -hmm. and, and we, would, we would be remiss not to mention yeah. that. that um, and it's interesting because we don't even call ourselves African Americans as much as we call ourselves Black Americans mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. with um, descendants of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was, I am a New Yorker, mm -hmm. which comes with a whole nother set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I just come from Black America, yeah. but we pride ourselves as Americans from New York. Mm -hmm. New York is, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we come with a certain, what's the word, independence. Mm. Um, independence. And, and uh, there's almost an arrogance mm. about yeah. how life works, mm. you know? And yeah. so, um, so yeah, I, I, I would like to celebrate black love, not because we share the same skin color, mm. um, but a Zulu man and a black American woman, we've had to... We've had to straddle. Um, I, on one of those very famous long distance phone calls, mm -hmm. um, Uncle Victor was talking about his father had a planet. Mm -hmm. And I was just so impressed with him, and I was trying to impress him on the other side of the phone. So I was acting so interested. Really? My goodness, a planet? And then the, as the conversation was ending, I realized I didn't know what a planet was. <laughs> So as we were about to say goodbye, I said, Ex excuse me, um, what's a planet? And he 
said, it's a car. I was like, oh, you mean a Plymouth. Oh. <laughs> so just for someone else, that seems like a small yeah. thing. But um, there are times when he asked me to, for my the first date to go, mm -hmm. to go on, to go with him. you, when you asked me out. And he said, I kept saying, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I was smiling. Mm -hmm. And he said, your face doesn't match. We, you know, and is What it, do you want to eat? I don't care. And he was like, that's so, you know, in my culture, that's rude. Mm -hmm. His culture, mm -hmm. dual culture, that's rude. In my culture, it just means whatever you would like. Mm -hmm. So every time he asked me, he was trying to get a different answer mm -hmm. because he said I was being rude. And I was thinking, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I want to impress you. You're yeah. asking me, so whatever you would like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, culturally, mm -hmm. while this is black love because of skin color, because of certain things that we have come through, mm -hmm. Apartheid, civil rights. Mm -hmm. There's some identification, similar but not the same. Mm -hmm. um, so there are times still, after 21 years, we have to be able to say, what did you mean? Because mm -hmm. your face is saying one thing, but your words are saying something else. So let's back up a second. Mm -hmm. Would that be good? Yeah, so I found out Americans can't spell. How do you call it called play? And it's called play. <laughs> I mean, you make an application, you apply. <laughs> this guy was written P L Y. And I was like, goodness gracious me, what's going on? <laughs> no, but really, I mean, it's, it, the, the, it's good to be able to have things to, to discover and learn about. Because mm. most times, I think we, we want something complete. Mm. So there's nothing to learn, so you get bored. Mm. So, in other words, uh, there's a certain thing about black love that is it just love of blacks or blacks mm -hmm. whether you're from anywhere in part of the world where there is that connection of blackness something so. as simple as food mm -hmm. uh, yeah my first uh, introduction we were in um, Mabatu. Mabatu. Mm -hmm. Mabatu. <laughs> we were in Mabatu and we were recording and uh, Baba was in the studio I was in the cafeteria area with some of the musicians I had brought from the States. And I saw this white stuff on their plate. The lights were dim, and I saw this white stuff on their plate. And because they're Americans, I thought, oh, it must be mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I, you know, it was stiff, and I was thinking, wow, these are organic mashed potatoes. <laughs> and I put it down on my plate, and it wasn't mashed potatoes. It was. Oh. And to this day, I avoid, because my first introduction, it was hard, it was cold. Mm -hmm. However, in black America, we eat the same thing, but we call it grits. Oh. And it's watery, and we don't eat it for the main course, we eat it at breakfast. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, so those little things that, um, sometimes we're trying to make it's so deep, yeah. and it's, it's, it's these little things that connect us. Mm. Just stop looking, I really, just stop looking, start working on being. Um, and I'm, I'm really very serious about that. We spend so much energy where God says, I know, I know you, I know you by name, you are carved on the palm of my, you're carved on the palm of my hand. And, and, you know, for us being married, speaking to, you know, the single community can be like, but you, you know, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. Um, and, I, and let me just really break it down. You know, uh, I have been divorced. And so I really was not looking. <laughs> and, and, you know, the need to stay focused um, on, uh, at that time, healing and discovering and recovery. And for the single community, I think there are a lot of young men and women who are healing and <laughs> recovering. And unfortunately, recovering from one relationship to another relationship. Who is it that says we, we practice divorce?
Look, uh, um, really, the more I have to think a lot, and uh, thinking if I just speak to as a, as a young man, you know, and uh, there are a lot of things I would have said to him, but more importantly, be patient. Take your time and listen more, you know, and listen more. And when I say listen more, listen more to God, you know, to listen to what God is saying, take that time. If I, if I were to talk to my, um, my 21 year old self, I would say you had dreams, you had aspirations, stay focused. Stay focused on your dream. Stay focused on your aspiration. You know, the gifts that we are given by God are for purpose, on purpose. got married, I had six months to live. I had an autoimmune disease called sarcoidosis, and he married me knowing I was sick. But I would lay in, 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 in our home, we had a, a seat smaller than this, wasn't it? A love seat. And I would sleep on it because it was uncomfortable. And it would disturb me through the night. And when I would wake up, I'd say, wow, I'm still alive. And um, there would be nights where I would, um, I would sweat so badly the bed would be soaking wet. Um, and he would bring a towel and a t-shirt and a change of underwear for me. And I would wake up in the morning and I would be completely changed. I would watch him walk around the house, our home in Edenvale. And I think to myself, why is he out there walking? Every, you know, look like seven times, like like the walls of Jericho. <laughs> and later, when I started getting better, he would say, you know, I was saying, not now. Mm -hmm. When I had given up and said, okay, I, I'm gonna just take this six months that I have, try to do quality, but um, I'm okay if I die. But he stood in the gap for me. No, there's nothing more than uh, trust God with all your heart, mm -hmm. soul, and mind. And I know we quote that a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you just trust God for everything and trust Him when you can't see Him, mm -hmm. 